Thank you, Lord. Yes, and we're the name Jesus. God, Amen. Thank Amen. You, Amen. Thank you. God. We thank you for showing sure. God, praise God. We thank the Lord for hearing the cries of our hearts. Amen. We, we are trusting and hoping that he will deliver. Praise God. We, we, we know that he's a God that has ears and he can hear us and he will answer amen 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 all right we're gonna go right into our lesson on today praise god it is interesting let me just do a quick recap it's interesting that on sunday I don't know how many of us heard the message that was preached, but last week we Jezebel. spoke mm -hmm. about yeah. Jezebel and her influence, um, yeah. influence she had on the children of Israel, trying to infiltrate mm -hmm. their beliefs, trying to manipulate their system with not only her adorning, how she adorned herself, but the kind of spirit that she has. And I remember saying that the book of Revelation chapter 2 spoke about her, spoke about the spirit of Jezebel and how it is trying to infiltrate our churches in this age. But we have to try and withstand, we have to try and combat the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel, a very cunning and subtle spirit, but, a, but also a spirit that must not be underestimated. Amen? So we continue this week with Disciples with Distinction, and we are looking at holiness for 
woman. Holiness for woman. And last week we dealt with adornment. And adorn means to add ornaments. Coming from the Greek word cosmos, which means world and we were explaining why is it that we try our best as christians as apostolics to refrain from wearing jewelry apart from jewelry that are functional why is it that we refrain from doing this all right so this week we are moving on to apparel to apparel amen amen and I start off this week with Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. If you're able to find it, Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. And while someone looks for that, if another person can find 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7. So Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, 1 first, first Samuel 16 and verse 7. And as we said, well, as I said last week, we not only want to be disciples, but we want to be disciples with distinction. Disciples that stand out, disciples that are a cut above the rest, disciples that are daring to be different, daring to be a Daniel, daring to stand alone, daring to have his purpose firm, and daring to make it known. All right, so Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5, do we have a reader on the line? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. All right. Thank you, Evangelist. Read First Samuel 16 and verse 7. Anyone? All right, I'll go ahead and read it. I, I can read. Okay. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. For the Lord looketh on the heart. All right, thank you, Evangelist Reed. So does it matter? how we appear on the outside if God looks on the heart. Does it really matter? Does it really matter? Absolutely. Why? Because man looks on the outward appearance. And, and, and as a result of that, it is taken into account how we attire ourselves. Some people dress to be admired. Nothing is wrong with that, um, but that speaks to pleasing ourselves. When we dress to be um, admired, we're dressing to please ourselves. Others dress to be accepted, and that speaks to pleasing others. Christian, however, Christians should dress to glorify God. Amen. Christians should dress to glorify God. Everything we do, God must get the glory. Amen. To dress modestly implies that clothing must provide sufficient covering for the body so that others are not tempted. So modesty must conform to God's opinion and not Rashida's opinion. Modesty must conform to God's standard and not Rashida's standard. So it's not about what we think, it's not about what we believe, but it's all about what God says. It's all about his standard. It's all about his opinion. Amen? Amen? Because as Christians, everything we do 
at the end of the day, God must get the glory. The attention must be directed to God. It's not for us. It's not for us. It's not about me. The songwriter says, all to Jesus I surrender. All mm -hmm. to him I freely give. That all is, a, is symbolizing every aspect of our lives. We are turning it over to Jesus. So everything we do at the end of the day, God must be pleased and God must be glorified. All right. It's not about us, but it's all about God. So we're moving on to man's kind first clothing. At first, Adam and Eve were clothed in innocence. They were clothed in innocence. But after sin came, their nakedness became a shame and a danger to them. They were now separated from God's glory, which had been their covering. So they were clothed and covered by the glory of God. But then sin came in the picture and there became a gap. And so now they were separated from God's glory and now they were naked. They had no covering. In Genesis 2, verse 25, it says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So they were naked in the beginning. They weren't ashamed. They didn't, they didn't know. They weren't aware. And they, when, when, when sin came in the picture, they tried to cover their nakedness by sowing fig leaves together to make an apron. The Hebrew word for apron is hagora, means girdle, belt, loin cloth, apron, or loin covering. This is a garment covering the pubic region and the hips. And this is man's idea of modest apparel. So who were the first dressmakers here? We had Adam and Eve. Their eyes were open and they realized, whoa, hey, we are naked. And they decided, okay, let's make ourselves some clothes. So they sewed fig, three, fig leaves together and they decided to make themselves their first garment. So the first outfit that was ever created by man was based on Adam's and, Adam and Eve's standard. It was based on their opinion. They thought, okay, making this is sufficient. This will cover us. This will hide us. Um, but they did not realize that their idea of modest apparel was not God's idea of modest apparel. Their standard was not God's standard. So they, they said, oh, we're, we, we sin, okay. Not like that, of course, but oh, we sin. Um, so let's, let's hide. Let's hide ourselves. Let's cover ourselves. And so they decided to make clothes out of fig leaves. And the scripture said their fig leaves were, was a representative of aprons. An apron is coming from Hagora, which means it covers the line area. So the pubic region was covered. And, uh, and that includes the hips and possibly the breasts, the pubic areas. So that was man's first clothing. I was trying to find a suitable image to show. Um, let me see if I can bring it up here. It might be a little funny but let's see what i can do don't know how many persons are using their laptop or desktop but let me see if i can get this image up it's it's a little cartoon but it would be similar to something like this if you can see it so their pubic regions were covered the the man's line the female's line in this image it doesn't show the top area but it's something similar to that so everywhere else was exposed so this was their idea of modesty 
all right so that was their idea of modesty but that was not acceptable the lord did not accept that that was not his standard in genesis 3 and verse 7 it says and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons however Adam and Eve still knew that they were naked in the sight of God. If you can read, evangelist, read Genesis 3 and verse 10 for me. Genesis 3 and verse 10. They, even though they're. And he naked, said, I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself right so they made the fig leaves but they knew that they were still naked before god so they hid themselves they hid themselves so since their covering was not acceptable to god you know what god did god said okay adam and eve i see that you're trying to create an outfit here it's not working out god decided that he was going to use or god used animal skins to make them a coat now, the Hebrew word for coat is cutanet, which means a tunic with sleeves coming down to the knees, sometimes to the ankles. This is a garment with sleeves covering from the shoulders, at least to the knees. And this is, a, this is God's idea of modest apparel. So God is like, okay, Adam and Eve, I see what you have made, but that, that's just not going to work. This is my standard. This is my idea of modest apparel. And I tried to find a cute on it. Cute on it. Let me see if I can share it. So let's see. It's not coming up here. But if you can see on my screen, so it's like a tunic. Everybody can see it? Yes. It's big enough. It's like a tunic. In Jamaica, we know that people wear tunic to school. So it, it, the, the shoulders are covered. Sometimes it goes down to the ankles. It doesn't have to go down to the ankles, but it usually comes down to the knees. All right, so that's what a, cute, a tunic is. If you're from the younger generation and you only know what a coat looks like, these are coats. These are coats. So we see what a coat look like. It's very roomy, modest, it's long, you know? It's like a jacket, it can keep you warm, it covers everything, it covers all the areas. So this was a represent, representation of God's idea of modesty. So God was saying, okay, I see your standard. I see your opinion, but that's not going to work. This is what I require. This is my requirement for you. So from the very onset, God was showing mankind that this is my idea of modesty. It dates and take us right back to Adam and Eve. It goes to show that when you are in sin, because sometimes we see sinners, we see the unsaved, and we see how they're, they're, they, they, they dress, and it's so skimpy, and it's so tight, and it's so close-fitted. The truth is, when you are in sin, you're going to do what sinners do. <laughs> You're going to do what sinners do because you are setting your standard. You're going to dress based on your opinion. And sometimes you will talk to them. They will say, but this is not, this is not tight. This is, this is okay. This is, this is not too bad. They don't understand. They're sinners. That's their idea of modesty. That's their opinion. That's their standard. But when you become a child of God, we don't attire ourselves based on the standards of the world. Our standards change. Our standards must be conformed to God's opinion, to God's idea. 
of modest apparel. So the world doesn't dictate to us what we should do. As children of God, we are called out to be separated. We are called out to come out from among them. There must be a difference. The world doesn't set the standard for us. God set the standard. We go by God's opinion. If Sister Reed can find Genesis 3.21 for me in the meantime, we go by God's opinion. God dictates what we do. Genesis 3.21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So you see, God became, God put on the role of a tailor, a just maker. And God said, oh no. That's not going to work, Adam. That's not going to work, Eve. Even though, even though you have sinned, even though you're, you have fallen, I'm going to cover you. I'm going to show you how it is that I want you to clothe yourself. So nakedness was covered from the beginning by God to defeat the temptation it created. Let me say that again. Nakedness was covered from the beginning by God to defeat the temptation it created. It is associated with sexual impulses and desires, so much so that to see or uncover nakedness is a biblical euphemism for sexual intercourse. Leviticus 20 and verse 17. Nakedness is a nakedness as a Moral shame is found in Genesis 3, 7 through to Revelation 16 and verse 15. So nakedness from the beginning was covered by God to defeat the temptation it created. And since God doesn't change, does God change? No. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His standard doesn't change. He's the same God. He changes. He changes not. Since God doesn't change, the principles of modest apparel have not changed. So if God instituted the standard from the get-go, and he changes not. His principles for modest apparel does not change. So he's requiring us to be set apart. He's requiring us, specifically ladies, to be different, to come out from among them and be separated and our idea of modesty must be based on God's opinion so for example somebody did say everybody's idea of modesty is different well everybody's idea of modesty doesn't really count God's idea of modesty is what counts so everything can be traced back to the word of God if his word denies it if his word rejects it it's not something that we should gravitate to and pull to ourselves to ourselves but as christians as disciples with distinction we must dare to be different we must dare to stand out and not blend in we don't dress to please ourselves we don't dress to please others but as Christians, we dress to glorify God. God must get the glory. God must get the glory. All right. Historically, men and women have worn robes for the major part of human history. However, the most important gender distinction 
was not simply in what they wore, but in how they wore it. All right? So back then, years ago, years, years ago, men and women, historically, wore robes. But it's not even so much in what they wore, but how it was worn that differentiate the genders. There were male and female ways of utilizing their clothing. Firstly, the priest wore what is called breeches under the robes. This does not occur very often in scripture, but in every case, it's a man's apparel. Exodus 28, 42. Exodus 39, 28. Leviticus 10, 6, 10. Leviticus 16, 14. And Exodus 44, 18. I'm going to ask Evangelist Reed just to grab a hold of probably two of those. Exodus 28, verse 42, and Exodus 39, verse 28. 44. Exodus 28, verse 42. 42. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. And Exodus 39, verse 28. And um, my, my sir of fine linen and godly bonnets of fine linen and linen breeches of fine twine linen and a girdle of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet of needlework as the Lord commanded Moses. Okay, thank you. So the men were instructed to wear a particular they, they had a part, God instructed them to have a particular dress code and their robes in particular had breeches underneath it, breeches. And let me see if I can show you what a breech looks like. Give me a second. <laughs> breeches, can you see it? Box. <laughs> see the breeches <laughs> looking like a boxer shot yes <laughs> it's, it's a little looser but yes pretty much the same all right so that's breeches mm -hmm. right somebody said boxers in the chat breeches mm -hmm. and so the men the priest in particular or men they were instructed to have the breeches under their robes women women were not allowed to wear breeches so they all had robes but underneath there was a special there was a special garment that was that that was designed specifically for men more specifically the priests women though were not allowed to wear breeches According to Hebrew lexicon, breeches means trousers that extend below the knee. The later English word British, or yeah, British is pronounced B R I T C H E S, British, the English word for breeches, developed from this term, did the later English word British developed from the term British is similarly referred to the term pants. So women in Bible times did not wear crotch garments. They didn't wear breeches. They didn't wear British. But neither did they wear pants. Women we're not allowed to do this because of God's disapproval. Thus, pants were worn exclusively by men for the first 5,900 years of human history. It's only in our century that women's apparel suddenly become or became impractical for women to wear. 
So up to the first 5,900 years, pants, breeches, breeches were exclusively worn by men. But it's only since our history or our century that the, the robes that women wear were becoming um, impractical. It was just becoming, uh, women weren't able to function in it. But up until that point, breaches were specifically assigned to men. Mm -hmm. Secondly, men in Bible times were permitted to gird up their loins while women were not. A man could transform his robe into a closer fitting, less cumbersome garment by bringing the back hem of his robe between his legs and tucking it in his waistband, which is the girdle. This created a trouser-like effect. I wish, I wish I could demonstrate it. But the man was able to use the hem, the back hem of his robe, pull it up and tuck it into his waist, which would allow the robe to become like a pants-like effect. And that was distinctive. It was distinctively designed that way so that gender could be differentiated. In the book of Job, chapter 38 and verse 3, the Lord said unto Job, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. So God was associating Job's acceptance of manly responsibility with the state of his apparel. Come on, Job, fix up yourself. Gird up your lines like a man because only men were required to gird up their lines. Gird, gird up yourself, man, like a man and answer me, talk to me. But these days, we have seen, like, men are, men are continuously saying, um, don't let me show you who wear the pants in this family. Or, I am the one that wears the pants in this family. It's a saying that is coming or stemming from, from back then, because men had a distinct role. And this was differentiated by their garments. Their garments uh, uh, signify a distinct gender, a distinct role, especially coming back from those days. So any garment that shows a separation of the legs above the knees is immodest for a godly woman. And let me, let me interject and say this, that I am not talking or referring to like scrubs, because I know some, some of our ladies, like they wear scrubs, they go to work and they wear scrubs, or the nurses or the doctors. No, but when it's a thing that you wear so that others can be attracted to you, so that God can not get the glory, but it's all about you. It's about self-pleasing. It's just the in thing. It's just what I want to do. Then there's a problem. When there's no proper function for it, there's a conflict. There's a problem. Because now you're, you're putting on what God has specifically designed for a particular gender. But when it, it serves a function for health reasons for safety reasons you cannot go into the emergency room unless you are decked in your uniform there's a specific role for it then i can understand and that's just wisdom prevailing right there but when we wear it just so that you know the tight fitting um pants that some of us probably like to wear and we don't want to let go of it and um this is just my thing it's just me that, that, that there's a problem because like I said last week, if everything boils back down to, it's just me, it's just what I want to do. It's just, the, oh, I want to look this way or this makes me look good. It takes the glory from God. And in everything we do, God must be glorified and everything we do must fall back to the standard and the opinion that God has for us for the sinners it's a different ball game 
but for disciples that are trying to be disciples with distinction. There is a standard, there's a dress code, there's a, a, an outline that God has for us. Amen. And we have to follow the principles of God. Yes, it's going to take some tears. It's going to take some of us getting rid of some stuff out of our closet. But if it's for God, it will be well worth it. If it's for God, if denying what we love is for the sake and the betterment of the gospel or the, the betterment of us spiritually, then we have to do it. If any at all, we want to grow and get to the place where God desires for us to be. There are some things that we just have to let go. There are some things that we'll have to say, you know what? I, I can't do this no more. Mm -hmm. I can't do this no more. I've got to let go. I've got to change my attire. I've got to change, change how I dress. It's not based on my standard anymore. It's based on God's standard. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. It says, The woman shall not, shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Notice that the commands are different for men and women. A man must not put on woman's garment. That is enough of a command for him because adorning is not um, a particular area that men struggle in. Usually when a, when a workplace sends out a dress code or um a co yes a dress code um usually most the the area that is more in in terms of uh, listing and stuff pertain it to the woman to the woman because men don't usually have that struggle i heard our bishop preach once that women are standard bearers we are standard bearers People, you can look, how you know that somebody is a Muslim, you can look. Just find a female, find a female, and you can tell. Find a female. She sets the standard for that religion just by how she carries herself. As children of Christ, as disciples of Christ, women, we have to set the standard. Amen. We have to carry ourselves the way God requires for us to carry ourselves. So it's not that God is not commanding the men. He's commanding the men. But that area is not usually a problematical area for men. But the instructions are more rigid for a woman because she is more tempted in this area a woman struggles more. I'm a, I'm a female, so I, I, I can't speak. A woman struggles more in this area than a man. And so as women, it should be our heart's desire to become disciples with distinction. Disciples that stand out and not blend in. The woman, she is not even to wear that which pertaineth. That's what the scripture says um, in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. A woman is not even to wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Pertains mean, pertaineth means relate. It means to have reference to. It means to be appropriate for. The Latin word for pertain it comes from um, 
I, I can't pronounce the word, but, but it means to reach towards. So a woman must not allow her feminine apparel to reach towards or to resemble or to relate to the clothing of a man or his masculine bearing. Women must be women. We must be set apart. We must be different. Allow the men to be the men. The word abomination occurs over 40 times in the Pentateuch. Its root meaning is disgusting, filthy, loathsome, or abhorrent. So it says all of these things are an abomination. All of these things are disgusting. They are filthy. They are loathsome unto the Lord. So wearing apparel that are relatable or resembles or associated associated to that of the opposite sex, whether we are male or female, is an abomination unto the Lord. So if we see a man out there in, a, in dress and looking all and acting all feminine and, 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 and acting more feminine than myself, doing the walk, doing the talk, shaking the head, shaking the hips. It's an abomination unto the Lord. And if you see a female acting and operating and dressing like a man, it's an abomination unto the Lord. There's an issue. The Lord rejects it. He despises it. From the very beginning, there's a distinction between gender. And we have that spirit totally creeping in into our modern society where men want to become like women and women want to become like men. And it's just contrary to the word of God. But the Bible speaks out against it and saying, no, no, no. It's an abomination. And while the world is being confused, the church has to be different. Apostolic ladies, we have to be different. The word apparel, as used by Paul in 1 Timothy 2, verse 8 to 10. I'm going to ask Evangelist Reed to read it. The word apparel comes from the Greek word katasto. 1 Timothy 2, 8 to 10. It comes from the Greek word katasto, which means a long flowing garment. Um, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shaped tastedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly aware array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. All right, thank you. With modest apparel, that apparel there comes from the Greek word katastol, which means long flowing garment. This word reflects a style of garment the Greeks called katastola, which was loose fitting and covered from the neck to the knees. From the neck to the knees. Never say ankles. Ankles is optional. If you want to go down to the ankle, by all means, please yourself. But from the neck to the knees that greek word apparel represents a free flowing garment free flowing what does free flowing mean it must not be sucked on where if a guy is looking on he can see all the imprints of the breast leg thigh and all the things that he ought not to see all the things that must be reserved for the inner courts when you're with your husband when you're at home by yourself we must adorn ourselves so that when someone look at us, wow, 
Look at that sister. My God, there's something about her. There's something different. And they don't even see her attitude. And I, I, I can say that there are people who put emphasis on the outward appearance and their heart is far from God. That's for another time. We're not talking about those today, but we're talking about those who want their hearts to be in the right place and in line with the principles outlined by the word of God. We have to dress modestly. Our clothes cannot be tight fitting. Ladies, whether you be from Prince Sanctuary, whether you be from elsewhere, as long as you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have to dress. We have to dress modestly. Somebody say, Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We cannot wear tight fitting garments. It's not based on the opinion and the standard that God has for us. There is a standard that the Lord has set and he wants us all to follow his standard. He wants us all to follow and abide by his opinion. So Paul was writing in the book of 1 Timothy, was the Apostle Paul writing, and the same requirement that he listed out, the same term that apparel means, free-flowing garment, is a reflection as to the same requirement that God had in the book of Genesis. So when God said to Adam and Eve, oh no, this is what you need to wear. Here's the coat. This is the standard. He gave them a standard. Paul was just following up to that standard when he said that you should wear modest apparel because that modest apparel is a reflection of a free flowing garment like a coat. So when we go to church, when we go to the assembly, not just in the four walls, because we are the church, wherever we go, wherever we are, on the mall, at school, at work, wherever we go, we have to ensure, because God is omnipresent. He sees all things. And it's not like we can take off our disciple coat and put it down and then go to the mall. Or we take off our disciple coat and we put it down and we go to work. Wherever we are, 24-7, 365, as long as we have put on the name of Jesus and decided to walk with him, we are always ambassadors for him. And Amen. so we should always dress to glorify God. God must get the glory. God must get the glory. So the garment that Paul speaks of in 1 Timothy is a garment of a woman that should cover her thigh and her knees. It doesn't have to be longer. I'm not going to say everybody must wear something all the way down to their ankle. It doesn't, but your thigh and your knees must be covered. Ladies, when we're going to church or when we're going anywhere, stand up. You see, if it's at our knees, it's too short because when we sit down, it's going to ride up. It's going to ride up. So we have to take that into account. If Paul wanted it to be longer or, or make it mandatory that it's longer, he would have used the, the word pedores, which is used in, for, in Revelation 1 verse 13, which refers to an ankle-length garment. But he did not. He used the word cast catastole, which refers from the neck to the knees. So it's not like they're putting us in bondage, if some of us want to think that way. But he's saying, no, you have to be modest. You have to be modest. So pants 
And I'm talking about the pants that many of us find it hard to let go of. They are not considered modest apparel. Even though they're past our knees, they're not free flowing. And also, they gird up the lines. <laughs> and when you're speaking to girding up the lines, you're making reference to a man. Likewise with tights. Paul also teaches us, and I'm going to wrap up here. Paul also teaches us that a woman's clothing should follow the principle of shamefacedness and sobriety. So a woman is responsible or should ensure that she does not dress to turn the eyes of the opposite sex or even the same sex. We have, to, we have to plug that in, especially in this day and age. We have to ensure that we don't dress so that others are looking at us and start wondering, hey, what's going on here? Or, wow, I like her. It shouldn't turn their eyes, their mind, or their attention to the form of the body. So we we'll have to ensure that we are dressing modestly. Because who sets the standard? God. God has a requirement. And we have to ensure that if we want to please God, that we dress in the manner that he requires. So I'm imploring to, to all our ladies, this is a challenge for us. It's a challenge for us. When, when we go in our closet, when we, when we are buying our outfits, whatever we're doing, let us ensure that if we want to be disciples with distinction, that we dress so that God can be glorified. So that when we dress, somebody doesn't look at us like, I'm so distracted. I can't even see. I can't even worship because it, it's just so tight. It, it shouldn't be tight where we can hardly walk. To step up, we have to kind of hold the, the hem down the bottom. No, that's distracting. The attention has been shifted. Now, nobody can worship because the dress is so tight, the, the outfit is so tight, the cleavage are popping out and all of that. No, God must be glorified. Amen. God must get the glory. Mm -hmm. So we have covered mm -hmm. adornment and we mm -hmm. have just looked at apparel. Mm -hmm. And next week, we will cover attitude. And this is all pertaining to women. Bless you, Sister Kayan. Bless you. This is all pertaining to women. So women, let's represent well. Let's represent the kingdom of God well. Let's not let our leaders have to the truth is maybe, maybe, maybe pastor won't say anything, but maybe don't, don't let our ladies lead or our ladies president have to say, no sister, that's too tight. Or no sister, you can't come to church looking like that. We have a responsibility. We have a part to play when we attire ourselves. We must know, we must know, something in the back of our head must say, no, no, this, this is not right. No, this is not right. If the anointed should move upon me at church, can I, can I move freely? Can I worship freely? Will I be exposed? Will I cause a distraction? Oh my God. Or will God receive the glory? 
All right, and I'm gonna end there for today. Any questions? I know our pastor is here, we have our ministers. So any questions, feel free to ask it now in Jesus' name. Somebody said in the comment, we shouldn't dress to bring, I don't know if this is pastor or um, minister Ray, shouldn't dress to bring about distraction. All that is done must give glory to God. That's Amen. it. All that is done must give glory to God. Right. And the, the truth is, saying the Lord, the Lord knows when we're being hypocritical. No, the Lord knows it. when we're being hypocritical. We, we look one way on the outside. We look okay on the outside to the standard just to impress those who are around us. But God also knows the heart. That's right. The heart. So we have to ensure that our heart is at the right place. Let us not be hypocrites. Oh, God. But if, in, if any at all, our hearts want to be in tune with the principles outlined by God, then we will have no issue dressing the way that God requires from us. For some of us, it might be more challenging than others. For some of us, it might take a little bit more time to adjust or to adapt. But allow the word of God to do the work and to manifest in how we carry ourselves. God bless you. Any other comments? Any questions? Um, yes. Praise the Lord, Sister um, Rashida. It's funny um, how you spoke about um, garments today. I mean, last week when you spoke about um, adornment, you know, after the session was ended, um, um, Sister Stacy and I, we were just like, uh, you know, talking about the session and how good it was and stuff like that. And um, she had made mention in the group about her anklet and how she, she was convicted to, you know, go, up, go away with it, you know? And... Um, I, after all that I was saying to her, I mean, with that, I was telling her about the same pants. I mean, I was telling her that, I mean, I've been buying pants over the years. And for the last couple of months, every time when I wear a pants, the pants keep tearing underneath the butt area. So, I mean, each time I just keep throwing them out. So I was left with one pants. And upon leaving with that one pants, I was still wearing it until bleach catch it. So now I don't have a pants to wear outside of my house, you know, or to dress up. But then, I mean, um, I found myself um, making that decision where, I mean, it's not even here nor there where pants is concerned. I refuse. I don't even want to wear it no more. You understand? So it has to be a decision too at the end of the day that you make a will to say, okay, this is not of God. And I mean, I was saying to her is, uh, you know, we say pants cover everything, but I mean, it's really fitted and it's showing up our physique and stuff like that. So my conviction, because I was telling her also about my necklace, how I used to wear. And um, one day, Sister Matthew turned to me first, and Matthew said, Sister Tana, you, 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 you look better without the necklace. And I'm like, I still hang on to the necklace, even though I don't wear it, you know? Because I haven't found the conviction yet to say, okay, I don't want the necklace, so I'm going to give it away or something. But with pants, I decided I don't want to wear it no more, so I'm not even going to put it on, you know? And this is just wearing pants outside of my house, because when I'm inside a house, I want to wear my shorts. I want to look sexy, because my husband is here, and I want to attract him. You understand? Which is different, as you explained, say, if it's, it's for a purpose, you know? And I mean, sooner or later, too, he's going to be attracted in my dresses and everything that I wear differently. So maybe I have to go away with them totally, nonetheless. You, who, who knows? But it has to be a decision. And when you mention about our garments and you emphasize that you went back to modern or um, older days as to the requirement of, 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 of God and how he desire us, for, um, us to, to, to adorn ourselves or to wear our apparel. You know, I mean, I was like, God, this was something we were discussing not so long ago, just last week. And here she is coming today talking about pants. And I'm not saying 
um, persons to just uh, stop where pants, uh, um, but they will eventually get, because when you, when you start, uh, like earlier mentioned that when you, 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 you desire, when you decide to say no, you want to follow God. You know, because sometimes we say we are Christian and we're baptized and everything, but we still, our desire is not yet even to follow Christ. But when we get that desire to really, really, really follow Christ, that is when some of the things are all the things that we, we, we hold on so dearly to. will just even eventually start um, loosening from us one by one, one by one. So, I mean, I thank you for the word and... I mean, I just thank God to just continue to lose things from me one by one that is not of him and to just lead me to where he wants me to be. That is true. That is true. Um, when, you, when, you, when you have a desire to change your appetite, um, because if you want to lose weight, let me, let me use that as an example, if you want to lose weight, you can't continue eating the way you are eating <laughs> and expect to lose weight. You have to make some changes and it's gonna require a sacrifice. But if you can see yourself wearing a size eight, you're currently wearing a 12 or a 16, but if you can see yourself wearing a size eight, you're gonna continue working and putting in the work to get to that size because you have a desire. You have a hunger to get back to that size. Similarly, it is with the, the, the journey as a Christian. There are some things, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this, for me, the challenge might not be the same for others because I was born and raised in the church. So I cannot take that away from persons who might have the struggle. And it's, it's only their, that's their challenge. That's their challenge. We start the, the race at different places, but there are other challenges that I might face. But the bottom line is whatever goal we set for ourselves, and if it's our desire to attain that goal, the Bible said the Lord works on the good desires of our heart. If it is our desire, it's going to take some sacrifice it's gonna take some sacrifice but we have to make up our mind and trust the lord to reveal all things to us here's a teaching that probably some persons have not heard before or have never heard it from this perspective and now a challenge is presented so what am i going to do am i going to take the step or am i just gonna stay here and just wait so the, the onus, as you rightly said, the onus is on us to make a decision and to just make that step, make that step. And while others are taking their time, let us be patient with them. Let us be patient with them. And when I say take your time, I don't mean you're being stubborn because some of us, we are stubborn and we just want to stay in our ways. But some of us, the Lord is working and the wheel is slowly turning. And with the rest of us who have passed that stage, let's be patient and just pray with them. Continue to encourage them. Remind them a little here. Remind them a little there so that eventually they can come to that place of understanding that, that they need to be so very good testimony and thank you for sharing that point sister Austina you have a question yes bless the Lord um I am I am thankful that you went over um the purpose of wearing pants you know I too received this that teaching um you know when I first began baptized about adornment um and I just, I don't want to have my own, um, in a way, my own understanding or for what you say to um, confirm my carnality if, you know, because yes, it is true that, you know, in workplaces, pants is a necessity and that should not be a rule that we should break, especially as Christians, you know, um, with working out, you know, I feel that it is necessary to wear tights or so. And um, 
you know, I remember a while ago there was, you know, like a presentation and someone showed um, apostolic workout wear for women. And I just could not grasp it because I was saying like, this is kind of too much, you know? Um, there comes a time, yes, we're contending for our fate, but there's a time when we become, you know, in a sense, like, I feel like it was just overzealousness with it. You know, we we're just doing too much. And, you know, I recently started working out too. And, um, you know, one time one of my co-teachers, um, I saw her on a hike and she was like, oh my God, I've never seen you in pants before. And wow, wow, wow. Like I've never seen this before. And it was something we never spoke about. She just, you know, noticed it. And I said to her like, you know, no, I do not wear pants, you know, um, because of religious reasons. And, you know, I explained to her, um, what was the reason? And she was like, well, why do you have it on now? And I said, well, the purpose is that I'm working out and, you know, safety reasons, pants are more to protect, but this is not something. And I do not, um, wear pants, you know, casually on the road. So, um, could we say that for women, when they are working out, that wearing for that period of time is okay? Or, is it because now they created apostolic workout where we should gravitate to that more of? What are your thoughts on that? I've never seen the apostolic workout wear. A fancy. <laughs> I'd like to see it. But yeah, Sister Rishi, they have the, um, they have the, it's like a jersey skirt. It looks more like a slippish material. Oh. But, um, it's a skirt. Um, it fits probably low this above your knee with the leggings under it. So um, when you're running, however, then you're not exposed. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, it, I'm going to safely assume that that's coming from a UPC, <laughs> a UPC church. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, as a minister, I would say um, the the uh, in my in my opinion, um, not necessarily coming from a biblical basis here, uh, in saying that I would recommend that if anyone is working out the 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 thing the thing here is the exposing of the, the, the body parts. So um, you're working out and you're in your tights and your legging and um, your, your shape and all of that is, 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 being, is being exposed, right? I think that would, that's where the conflict would be. So if, if you're going to, if one is going to wear a leggings, it would be good to to put um, a skirt on, or you know, I'm not saying it has to be weighed down, but but uh, um, to your ankles, but something that will cover um, the woman's um, body shape. Right. And this is interesting that that question was asked because it was just this morning that we were in our um our what we call huddle i work i work for an hospital a hospital and um we were in there and they brought about the dress code and the dress code is coming from um you know the higher ups and their thing is they don't even want their ladies to wear leggings it's, it's and they said if you wear the leggings Leggings is, is okay, but you have to ensure that your shirt that you have on is, is below, yeah. comes down, or you have to wear a skirt over it. Now, this is interesting. I, 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 I thought it to be very interesting because this is what you'd call a secular institution um, that really has no no glory as it pertains to God per se, but more is just a, a, pref a preference for their ladies to represent their organization. And so I'm thinking if 
ungodly men can make such a distinction to preserve their institution, then it should be a small price for our ladies to ensure that, you know, if you're doing exercise, you know, you, you not necessarily want to put on a heavy jeans um, to weigh you down more, but at the same time, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're covered up um, to the point where your body is not exposed. I think that is the fundamental here to ensure that your body is not exposed. Okay, thank, thank you, Minister Ray. Any, any other comments, questions? Did, did that answer your question, Sister Gentles? Yes, amen, it did. Okay, all right, God bless. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Well, if we if we should make the comparison, saints, to the, the reality that the Lord left his throne, he left his throne and came into sin, into time, into sin, amongst dwell among sinners. He gave up everything, put aside everything just to save us. His requirement for us is minute. It's not much. It's not much. The only person it might offend is us because we want to do our own thing. We want to have our own way. But if he could do such a great thing for us, it is only fear that we could repay him by surrendering all. It is only fair. And this is a fasting service, a fasting session. And it's, it's a perfect setting for us to just lay it all on the altar. You know, some things that we hold so close to our hearts. Some, some things that we think that the truth is some of us, Last year, we were saying, oh, no, I would never do that. I can't do that. But the growth that we have experienced since making that statement, some of us can say, man, I, I, I did not see myself at this place years ago, as we heard from Sister Santos' testimony. Last week, Sister Stacy said she kept wearing something, and it was one Sunday, I think, when she was getting ready for church. It just came to her that, hey, you can't wear this no more. You can't wear this no more. So sometimes the Lord is requiring, I don't even know if I should say much. It is much to us because we want to do it or we're used to doing it it's in our nature to do it but considering what he has done for us it's the least that we can do but it is also the best thing that we can do so i just want to encourage us especially the ladies to our gentlemen who are married you know we you, you have a part to play too look out for your wives look out for your wives you know ensure that they are representing see you see my husband he always say when you dress you represent me i remember i think he preached a message once and he called out pastor bishop and he called out lady McHugh, and he put pastor at the front and put lady McHugh to the next side and he said when you look at him you see her <laughs> and when you look at her you see him because she is a representation of him i don't know if anybody remember that message and he is a representation of her i mean if if lady max should come to church one day dressed in a way that we can't imagine we would all be shocked so as believers, the requirement of us is to be modest, dress so that the Lord can be glorified. 
as, as ladies, as disciples, dress so that the Lord can be glorified. If I should bump into anybody at the mall, I hardly go to the mall, but if I should bump, to any, bump into anybody at the mall or one of the Shiloh Heights at the airport or somehow in New Jersey, I shouldn't be afraid to call to them because of how I look or because of how they look. I should say, hey, that's my fellow sister my fellow brother in Christ. And the person, if we're traveling with a partner, the person shouldn't look confused as to, so how comes you look like this and they look like that? We must all be standard bearers, representing and lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. So that when people see us, they know that there is a God and that they, they will want to be drawn to the God that is in us. I end with this scripture or this story. Ruth said to Naomi, entreat me not to leave thee mm -hmm. or to return from following after thee. Where thou goest, I will go. Where thou, go, where thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people will be my people and your God, Hallelujah. listen, she was changing her entire belief. She was changing her lifestyle. There was something about Naomi that pulled Ruth to God. She said, your God will become my God. Ladies, let us become like Naomi that will pull roots. There are some roots out there, some other young that need to be drawn to God. Let us not become uh, uh, blockers, stand in the way of sinners. Let's not stand in the way of sinners, but let, become, let us become an avenue so that when people see us, they can say, hey, there it goes a child of God. God bless you today. God bless you today. And Lord's willing, we will continue next week. God bless you. Evangelist McHugh at this time. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, everyone. Once again, bless the Lord. Minister Rashida, we give God thanks for you and for the word. Bless the Lord Jesus. I'm sure that everyone have a takeaway from the word today. Bless the Lord Jesus. We are called out to be different, to be set apart, and to give God the glory in everything that we do. Bless the Lord Jesus. And we represent God. Bless the Lord Jesus. So we want to um, live a life that is pleasing unto our God every day of our life. Bless the Lord Jesus. And to be an example to those that are looking on. Bless the Lord Jesus. So at this time, we are going to be closing off our fasting service for today and so we are all going to join in prayer bless the lord jesus and we're going to pray one for another at this time that the lord will help us to be different and to be what he wants us to be praise the lord so let us all pray everyone at this time holy god we come into your presence one more time jesus Lord God Almighty, we love you, we appreciate you, we acknowledge you. Mighty God, we want to thank you today for your love, for your goodness, for your mercy, your care towards us. We thank you, Lord God, for your words today, Jesus. Mighty God, you have called us, Lord God, to be different today, Jesus. To live a life that is holy, to live a life that is pleasing unto you, God Almighty. Oh, glorious God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will turn the search in light in us today. Oh, God Almighty, help us today, Lord God, to examine ourselves, Lord Jesus, before you. To see, oh, God Almighty, whether or not, Jesus, we are walking upright before the mighty God, according, Lord Jesus, to your will and to your way. Oh, glorious God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will continue, mighty God, to lay your hands upon us, Lord God continue to speak to our hearts lord jesus never leave us alone mighty god help us to adhere lord god to your words jesus 
almighty God, to your will and to your way for our lives. Oh, glorious God, help us to be different. Oh, mighty God, I pray today, Lord Jesus, that you will help us, Lord God, as ladies, Lord Jesus, to be mighty God and example, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, for even our men. Mighty God, as we adorn ourselves in our different apparel from day to day, mighty God, help us, Lord Jesus, to be different. My God, have your own way in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls today, God. And everything, Lord God, that we need to show, everything, oh God, that we need Jesus to put off, oh God, and everything that we need to put on, Lord God Almighty, I pray, Jesus, that it will be according to your way oh god have your way today we thank you we bless you and we praise you in jesus much less name amen bless god let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight O lord our strength and our redeemer the lord bless each and every one of us today have a blessed rest of your day Everyone in Jesus' name, God bless.